Towards the end of 2020, a short book entitled Let Us Dream was published. It is a most personal and thoughtful reflection by Pope Francis, written in a conversation he had with Austin Ivory. It was written with the backdrop of COVID-19. So much of his reflection has to do with how we are responding to this pandemic. The book is divided into three sections using the familiar reflection process. See, choose, and act. It is intended to exhort us to walk Francis's path to a better future, as named in the subtitle. Little did Pope Francis know that on January 6, 2021, not even a month after the publication of his book, Let Us Dream, there would be an insurrection in Washington, D.C., led by President Trump's supporters. Many news sources have reported on this event, and countless commentaries have been written about it. One that I have found most compelling is a short video produced by Bishop Robert Barron entitled, We Need a National Examination of Conscience, which is presented in this presentation. Hey everybody, it's Bishop Barron. Like everybody else in the country, I've been watching these uh, appalling images from Washington, D.C. I was just there not long ago. And to see these violent, riotous mobs inside of the U.S. Capitol, someone um, with his shirt off and a crazy hat on standing at the presidential rostrum in the Senate, uh, they, they appalled me. I mean, not just as an American, but as a, as a Christian. You know what's striking me was this. Uh, just a few months ago, I read a book on uh, Abraham Lincoln's uh, first inauguration. And there was great concern at the time, at the greatest national crisis in our history, there was concern that they wouldn't be able to count the electoral votes. And they managed to do it in 1861, something which just amazingly we were not able to do today. And the problem is, what we're seeing, it seems to me, is a breakdown of one of the great uh, qualities of our liberal democracy, by which I mean the opening up of a nonviolent space, a space of conversation, of debate, of argument, of voting, all these nonviolent means by which we adjudicate our disputes and move forward as a country. To see violent people invading that civilly sacred space was what was so disturbing and so unnerving. And you know, to be fair, we're living through really difficult times and today was kind of a culminating event. There was a lot of violence this past year, plenty to go around across the ideological spectrum, people attacking our institutions, people refusing to engage in anything like real argument or discussion or, or civil discourse but resorting to violence. Um, this has got to stop, and I say that as an American, but again, also as a, as a Catholic bishop, because so many of the best qualities of our democracy are grounded in deeply religious principles, equality and freedom and the dignity of the individual and this nonviolent space for the adjudication of our disputes. You know, it was Lincoln himself at the, uh, at the Gettysburg Address. We saw the Civil War as the definitive sign that this system had broken down. And he said, we're fighting the war to see whether this experiment in democracy can long endure. Well, I don't know if we're at that same crisis moment, but we're something like it now. And I think all of us have to engage in a sort of national examination of conscience and really look at the way, and this is across the board, this is from social media to our streets and now to the Capitol itself. How are we adjudicating our disputes? Are we able to inhabit this, this healthy space of our democracy? Or are we resorting to something far more dangerous, far more primitive? Can we all engage in this, in this national examination of conscience and take a good hard look at this, this very, very negative turn that I think our country has taken? And that's today on this, this rather disturbing day, frankly, um, in a renewed way, pray for our country. And God bless you. To engage in such an examination, 
We use here salient quotes from Pope Francis's essay, followed by questions of our personal examination. In this past year, 2020, of change, my mind and heart have overflowed with people, people I think of and pray for and sometimes cry with, people with names and faces, people who died without saying goodbye to those they loved, families in difficulty, even going hungry because there's no work. Sometimes, when you think globally, you can be paralyzed. There are so many places of apparently ceaseless conflict. There's so much suffering and need. I find it helps to focus on concrete situations.